Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today's topic is Introduction to Nutrition and Carbohydrates. I am Dr. Sabira Alia Dakar, Demonstrator in the Department of Community Medicine, GMC, Srinagar. Before we go ahead, let's watch this video. I hope you've gone through the video and it has given you a clear idea of what is our presentation all about. First thing we'll be talking about is the basic definition of the common terms which are commonly used in the nutrition chapters. We will use keywords to understand them. First is the food. It is the substance which is consumed other than water and drugs. It is used for maintaining health, well-being and vitality of the individual. Sometimes food are eaten raw. But most of the time, they undergo a process such as cooking, boiling, frying, and baking. After such process, the food is what we know as diet or meal. The key word here is the substance consumed other than water and drugs. Second is the nutrients. Nutrients is the chemical factor or the active ingredient which is present in the food items. They determine the quality of the food and the health of the individual. Examples are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. Nutrition is the branch of science which deals with the study of the dynamic process, that is the continuous process in which the food is consumed, utilized, and assimilated. Here the key word is the branch of science defining the dynamic process. Dietetics is the practical application of the principles of nutrition. It includes the planning of meal for the well, that is in special cases like children after six months of age during weaning, in pregnancy and in elderly, and in the cases of sick like those for diabetes, hypertension, gout or cancer. Balanced diet. It is the diet which consists of right kind of food in right proportion to provide energy and proximate principles for maintaining health, vitality and well-being. For nutrition, the key word is the branch of science which deals with the dynamic process in dietetics, is the practical application of the principles of nutrition. In balanced diet, it is the diet with the right kind of food in right proportion. Now we've talked about proximate principles. What are the proximate principles? Proximate principles are the three 
active ingredients that is the carbohydrate protein and the fat together they are often called the proximate principle because they form the main bulk of the food we take in indian diet they contribute to the total energy intake in the following proportion carbohydrate consists around 65 to 80% that is the major bulk protein from 7 to 15% and fat around 10 to 30% classification of food Food can be classified on the basis of their chemical nature, function in the body, chemical properties, mass, origin, and their nutritive value. By chemical nature, we mean the active ingredient, in which we have the carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, dietary fiber, and water. By the function in the body, we have energy-giving or the yielding food, that is the fats, carbohydrates-rich food. Example: cereals, sugar, ghee, and oil. Body-building foods are the protein-rich food, example milk, meat, fish, egg, pulses. Protective foods are the vitamins and mineral-rich food, example fruits and vegetable. By chemical properties, they are divided into organic and inorganic. By mass, they are divided into micronutrients, which is required in big quantity, and micronutrients, which is required in small quantities. By origin, they are divided into plant foods or the animal. Foods. and by nutritive value they are divided into 12 categories like cereals millets pulses vegetables nuts and oils fruits animals food fats and oils sugar and jaggery condiments and spices miscellaneous foods classification of nutrients they are divided into macronutrients and the micronutrients micronutrients as you see in the pictures are carbohydrates proteins and the fats they are required in large quantities and so they are constituted the main bulk of the food they are often called the proximate principles the contribution in the food is as follows protein 7 to 15% fats 10 to 30% and carbohydrates 65 to 80% micronutrients they are required in small quantities varying from micrograms to milligrams these are minerals and vitamins now we come to carbohydrates carbohydrates are called so because they are composed of carbon hydrogen and oxygen they constitute the main bulk of our diet when we classify the carbohydrates they are grouped into monosaccharides disaccharides or the polysaccharides monosaccharides have a single unit that is glucose galactose fructose or ribose disaccharide have two carbohydrate units that is lactose maltose sucrose polysaccharides have more than two units that is starch or cellulose carbohydrates like we said are in divided into monosaccharide disaccharide polysaccharide now monosaccharide examples are the glucose fructose and galactose mono meaning single we have a single sugar molecule disaccharide like the examples of maltose sucrose and lactose di meaning two we have two sugar molecules linked polysaccharides examples are starch glycogen and cellulose poly meaning many we have many sugar molecules linked functions of carbohydrates they are the main source of energy that is 1 gram releases 4 kilocalories of energy they are essential for oxidation of fat which is stored as glycogen in liver and the muscles excess carbohydrates are stored as fat in the body they are also the structural unit of the nervous tissue and are known as cerebrocytes they exerts the protein sparing action and they add flavors and texture to the food and increases the palatability daily requirement of carbohydrates it should constitute at least 60 to 70% of the total energy requirement of a man what are the sources of carbohydrates carbohydrates are seen richly in cereals roots pulses tubers fruits sugar jaggery and honey and a smaller quantity in many other food carbohydrates and disease high intake of sweets such as sucrose rich food like candies cakes and ice creams predisposes our body to obesity increased level of glucose can lead to exhaustion of beta cells which causes diabetes sucrose favors growth of bacteria which produces acid a corrosive action on the enamel and teeth leading to dental caries glycemic index glycemic index is important when we talk about carbohydrates leading to diabetes now what is glycemic index 
methods of assessing and classifying foods based on their glycemic response. It talks about the quality of carbohydrates and not the measurable quantity. Carbohydrates that break down quickly into the digestion have the highest GI, that is glycemic index, which is bad, while those that break down slowly, releasing glucose gradually into the bloodstream, have a low GI, which is good. Now, glycemic index range is divided into low, intermediate, and high. Low is 55 or less, intermediate is 56 to 69, high is 70 or more. GI of common food Glycemic index is divided as we've read low, medium, and high. The five groups like grains, starch, vegetables, fruits, dairy, and proteins. In grains and starch, we see a wide range from low GI to high GI. In vegetables, it's usually the low GI. In fruits, it is from low to medium GI. In dairy as well, we have from low GI to medium GI. In proteins, it is ranging from low to medium GI. Significance of GI. Low GI is good. Therefore, it means a smaller rise in blood glucose level after every meal. This helps people to lose weight and it can improve the body's sensitivity to insulin. It is good for those diabetics who want to bring into a diabetic control and can prolong physical endurances. Dietary fibers. These are the unavailable carbohydrates or the inert component with very little nutritive value. They are non-starch polysaccharides which are found in vegetables, fibrous fruits, bran and whole grains. They include cellulose and non-cellulose polysaccharides, for example hemicellulose, pectin, lignin and insulin. Functions of dietary fibers. A major part is not digested but is degraded by microflora in the colon. Only a small part is digested by the microflora to help themselves in multiplication and gas production. This gas production makes the stool bulky and soft. The deficiencies of fiber can lead to constipation and diseases like hemorrhoids, hernia, diverticulosis and varicose veins. They bind with the cholesterol and enhances their excretion. Low fiber leads to higher concentration of carcinogen which is ingested in the food. Fibers also acts as a scavenger and removes the tissue debris and other unwanted material from the intestines through the stools. They help in facilitating the normal peristaltic movement of the intestines. And the soluble fibers prevent gallstones and obstructive jaundice. They also shun down the absorption of glucose. Therefore, they are highly recommended in the diabetics. The requirement is an average diet should include 40 grams of fiber per day. Dietary Fibers Summary they are indigestible complex carbohydrate which is not hydrolyzed by the body's digestive enzymes and are found only in plant-based foods. They are not present in meat, fish or poultry. They consist of cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin, pectin and gums. The intake increases a sense of fullness and satiety. They eliminate toxins and carcinogen through the gut, reduces stool transit time and causes slower reutilization of sugar and fat. They modulate colonic microflora and lower risk of heart disease. They prevent recurrent gallstones and they relieve irritable bowel syndrome. I hope that you have understood the topic of introduction to nutrition and carbohydrates. Now let's see how much you've understood. It would be better if you maintain a notebook of nutrition and write down these assignments along with your notes. Now, if you are sitting for a viva and the examiner is asking you to differentiate the different terms given below using the keywords which were explained in the presentation, kindly write down in your notebooks food, nutrients, dietetics, nutrition and balanced diet. The second assignment is a practical assignment which you can apply at home or to someone you know who is a diabetic. You have a diabetic patient at home. What are the foods you will ask him or her to avoid and why? 